kind of hurt. Brain doesn't have any nerve endings. One, Jeffrey is a very, very sick man. Hi, Dr. Dead, your favorite man, man, anime, and a horror specialist. And today we're talking about Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer special on Netflix. Now, the Jeffrey Dahmer special in particular is one of 16. The Jeffrey Dahmer special is one of 15 to 16 different specials that have been created over the last 30 years. There seems to be an overarching obsession with Jeffrey Dahmer as not only a character, but as a serial killer. And this is just going to be a quick 10 episode summary regarding the series because everybody keeps talking about it and no, these aren't Jeffrey Dahmer shades. So cut it out. Don't even think it. Let's establish a couple things about his character before we get into this video. One, Jeffrey is a very, very sick man. He has an extreme behavioral health issue. So he's a serial killer, a necrophiliac, he's a cannibal. We're gonna discuss all those issues and how many victims he actually has had. So I'm gonna discuss a couple things. One, the victims he's had, his overall issues, and three, why we don't need trauma porn. We really don't need any more of this shit. And I'll get more into that later. My friend Jeffrey Dahmer focuses more on his childhood, which I actually prefer. More in terms of the realism as far as how he became who he is. One, there's a lot of focus on his father and himself, not like in the show, they talk about how he had roadkill, how he's basically picked up animals and creatures from the floor, uh, killed frogs, implied he would kill dogs, watching other men jogging and things of that nature. His obsession, his blank stares, his inability to be social, have any social skills whatsoever. Cause it's split between 10 episodes. The movie kind of just, Throws it all at you at once in the first 30 minutes. One of the main things he had strong issues with is, well, his family. Now, clearly you see his mother had behavioral health issues and... You never once asked me to help you with one of your projects out in the garage with the animals like you did with your father. Not once. I don't think you'd want to. You're right! It's fucking disgusting! You know, she's pulling a knife out on his father on multiple occasions. Like I mentioned the My Friend Jeffrey Dahmer uh, movie as well. You see something similar to that nature as far as the relationship. They kind of just speed blitz that. They focus more on his victims, him getting caught as a killer. Um, but this really started at 16, 17 years old when his parents got divorced, basically. You could tell beforehand it was starting to be taxing when his mind says his mother and his father. It's not just one of them. They both abandoned him. This is not me being humane or none of that shit. It's just me simply saying these are things that further spiraled him into the character he's become. So it's not just, you know, he's a psychopath or he's a paper health issues. It's just somebody that's parents abandoned him when he needed him the most. And he had to turn to something else. Other people, you know, he didn't really have any friends. So he's going to school drinking, acting a damn fool, trying to get everyone's attention. And it goes even further into that, even when his victims where he pretty much begs for them to stay. And I don't think anybody understands like what that means. If you're somebody, a normal person, the normal person, your normal reaction, when they beg you to stay, because human beings, although we are social in nature and we crave attention, we love attention, we love, you know, our partners and our friends being with us, we definitely have a huge like click in our brains that goes, wait, you want me to, to what? You want to leave because people don't genuinely speak about what they want. They don't speak about what they need. They don't further push this concept that. We as human beings need some type of companionship. So you go out to somebody randomly and say, hey, stay. And we work, <laughs> we go to school, we have job. Like, you're so many other things, especially if you have children or business owner. You don't have time 24 seven to do that. And because of what's wrong up here, you know, that's his decision is, you know, the drug people and make them stay. <laughs> so he can do anything unlimitedly because of the concept of responsibility and that because he never got those things from his parents. So he wasn't getting attention or love from his parents, so he's gonna get it from somebody else, like any other person. Or the woman that has an OnlyFans account. I mean, you, you need attention somewhere. His need for attention got him to ask actual children for attention, which is absolutely saying that, you know, asking children for attention as a grown ass man. The minute the police were notified this was an underage child, no matter how exaggerated it was, that should have instantly been reported. Now, I'm trying not to discuss the obvious racism in it, but it's very clear, even though this was 91, 1990, you know, the killings here, there was clear racism in the majority of America at that time, especially if you pay attention to political laws put in place. Everybody that's from the 90s knows about the super predator era. So we will leave it at that. But how many people he's killed? You know, I mentioned children. I'm not gonna go into specifics on how many children he's killed. But he's over 
teen victims, most of which was acquired while he was staying um, at his you know current location, leaving his family. We're talking he had time to kill these people, hide bodies, and it's you know, the little nice way of saying it in an urban neighborhood. To the point where police are ignoring it, the general person is ignoring it. It's almost as his homosexuality was like a scapegoat from the get away with what he did. And to be honest, <laughs> the minute he was considered a sex offender, and you know the judge basically said, "Yeah, we'll just uh, not label you a sex offender." And that only happened because, well, the industrial prison complex. And I'll explain why. If you're an immigrant coming from Ireland, and in this case they are Croatian, which again, if I'm saying that wrong, correct me. Jamaica, Japan, any country around this world, you are not going to be able to physically afford, financially afford, you know, a proper lawyer. So that was just only slipped under the rug because of race, and they didn't have the money. If they had a good lawyer, that would have ended differently. But can you imagine, like 2022, your daughter is touched on by a grown ass man, and they tell you, lawyer or not, you know, yeah, we're not going to put him in the system as a sex offender. That is why. Paying attention to your local elections and your, the officials in your area is very important. They ignore it and sweep it under the rug. I thought that was the most disgusting thing about the entire doc overall. Complete dissuasion and inhumane perception of children because they're a different race is disgusting. Because I can say the same for black children. It wouldn't have mattered. Black children, Asian children. It's very clear that that's what they're trying to push. <laughs> Sick shit. What he did to our race. All right, so why don't we need more trauma porn? Well, because we fucking don't. It's kind of getting to a point now where um, I brought it up in the Candyman. The Candyman remake came out. It was a very good movie, and then we got to the last last 30 minutes, and it turned to a PC piece. We got a lot of those. Hollywood's gotten really lazy. You guys got to stop giving them. Stop paying. You guys got to stop paying for this shit. You don't need to be consistently and constantly reminded. You don't, we don't need hashtags. I understand, by the way, why the LGBT community wanted the gay uh, hashtag removed from the movie as well, by the way. Because I don't want to see Black Lives Matter on every little fucking movie that involves. And because everybody knows, by the way, if you did not know, BLM as a whole right now is a sham. And the original BLM was not clientele pro as in the feds didn't get involved. The new shit is just full of scam artists and people with black faces that just steal money from people instead of the betterment of black people. They're just stealing the money. These men and women are living in lavish houses and multi-million dollar homes. So yeah, there shouldn't be lazy tags because you're black. Oh, you're black, let's put BLM in it. Oh, you're gay, let's put the... This is part of the reason why I don't like Twitch, YouTube, and all these other platforms. Hate is gonna come in all forms regardless. We don't need that shit. I'm finding it on my own without a fucking tag. <laughs> it ain't for us, that's all I'm saying. It ain't for us. It's, it's for other people to enjoy and consume content based off your skin color and your race and ethnicity. Which, in the future, I will go in detail about that. But these corporations are just getting away with just force feeding us. This is something you traumatically experienced. Let's show this in movie format and get a rise out of you. And unfortunately, that's basically what this is. And we got Glenda speaking to Reverend uh, Jesse Jackson, which honestly, I thought this doc was very, very good. We got to that point, despite the realism in it, you want me to really believe this woman was sitting next door and her children and it smelled like dead bodies and nobody said shit. And this has nothing to do with race. I mean, literally, you can't have stay dead bodies in a complex or apartment building and not go to jail for that shit. Now, I'm not saying that he didn't do that. I'm saying that, that if they literally walked in and could smell dead bodies, there's no fucking way that he'd get away with that. Yes, he had dead bodies, and yes, she was nearby. But for me to believe that you were next door and you smelled that shit and you did not have the police coming, that, there's no way. There's so many things in the movie that is extremely questionable. There's no fucking way police came into this fucking house. What a <laughs> look at the fucking friend. No. <laughs> And I'm just laughing about it because there's, a lot of the scenes are actually still realistic. You know, you actually can use even the scene uh, in court uh, where the young woman uh, was screaming and Jeffrey Dahmer came to attack him. That's real. Um, a lot of them are almost depicted and visually re represented and reacted um, in the court scenes in particular, which I, I thought was a nice touch. So I'm not saying the trauma of the victims. Let's be very clear. I am not saying the trauma of the victims is not real. Not saying that. That's not what I'm talking about at all. That is true, and that's factual. This man raped, kidnapped, abused, cannibalized, and assaulted men and young boys. There is no advantage about it. it. And it is very possible it could be race-based. 
but I'm not gonna sit here and do a whole stinking think piece about this person being a serial killer. You guys already made like 16 other movies about this man. This should be the last one. We don't need another one. <laughs> no, seriously. We don't need another one. Nobody benefiting from this except the people from Netflix. These are the multi-million dollar corporations that are trying to make money from us from trauma porn. That's what they want. They're using these tags as a manipulative tactic. The Secret Life of Jeffrey Dahmer, a biofilm self-titled with his name, Raising Jeffrey Dahmer, the Jeffrey Dahmer Files, <laughs> like, my friend Jeffrey Dahmer. There's a Netflix special that came out in 2018. Dark Taurus is about Jeffrey Dahmer as well. Netflix has already been producing Jeffrey Dahmer content on their own platform. Anyways, Dr. Dan out as usual. You will see the Madman at some point next week. Dead Tone and Devil's Rejects. And I said I'm gonna do Bleach and Chainsaw Man this month, but I'm here to tell you now that shit probably not happening. Cause I wanna see three episodes come out before I have a, an idea first. So, well.